Well, we're here at uh, continuing our journey at uh, San Diego Comic Con 2019. I'm talking to one of my uh, comic book uh, artist uh, idols, Jimmy Robinson. How are you doing? I'm doing just great. Right on. Well, Jimmy, I love your comics. I'm a big fan of your Bomb Queen series. Uh, uh, tell us about your childhood comic book influences. Who are the artists that you were looked up to? Oh, I looked up to Neil Adams. I loved a lot of this stuff and uh, uh, a lot of early DC work. You know, uh, I remember I didn't get into comics until like late teens, though. But that's when I had somebody in a, uh, a comic retailer helping my mom out who would then send books to me with like little post-its on it saying, you know, check this out, look at this inking, look at this penciling, look at this layout. And that helped influence me a lot. And I never to this day met that guy. He would only give stuff to my mom. And then I would just get comic books from like this comic book angel or whatever. And uh, that was cool. And yeah, a lot of early influences, uh, even way back to like GI combat and stuff oh, like that, yeah. and the Haunted Tank and whatnot, and some of EC comics. It was just like, I didn't do the whole 7 Eleven spinner rack thing, or, you know, back in them when they had that. But I always liked, there was always something in there that I liked, but I always tend to go to some of the weird angles. And that influenced me a lot. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. So it was almost like morbid and not necessarily superhero, but other genres too, war, horror, whatever else. Right, right. And that's where um, I didn't become like a superhero head kind of a guy. I did love him. I did love him a lot, but my it wasn't my only focus. You know, like I was a Batman guy, I was a Superman guy, or I was, a, you know, an X-Men guy or whatever, uh, or an Iron Man guy, whatever. It, it just, it was just part of my range. That, that, that hit me. And so when I started my own comics, I didn't really have that style. I mean, I came to San Diego Comic Con. My first year was in 90, 1994, 93, 94. And I came right up to the door of my portfolio and I was so chicken, I didn't even come in the doors. I came all the way to San Diego and never went in <laughs> because I was so scared because my style didn't match anything. It didn't have the Marvel style at the time or the DC style at the time, because my early influences weren't so focused. So I didn't know how to draw Spider-Man. I didn't know how to do, do, do uh, you know, all the, all the characters that they did. And uh, that, that just really, you know, opened my eyes to a new thing. So I just started self-publishing and it, it's, it was just a wild ride that way. And yeah, I, I mean, I'm a, yeah, that's where I am. So tell us about self-publishing and then getting into Image. Yeah, self-publishing I did because, like I said, I came here and then chickened out. So then I got my act together and I said, well, I'll just do my own book. I won't come in here and try to find a job with my style. Uh, and what year was that? Like I said, 94, but then um, doing my own stuff was in 95 going into 96. And I started self-publishing. I did a book called Cyberzone. I did eight issues of that. Oh, okay. and, um, uh, and it got to a point where I was like, you know, the indie scene at that time was really tough. And I was just doing it because I just wanted to cut my teeth and do something. And then... Um, and tell a story. Yeah, and tell a story, exactly. And then at a certain point, I just, in a hubris of mine, just announced to the industry, well, you know, I'm going to stop doing this. You know, it was a bit of fun and all that. But, you know, I don't think anyone's really... It's not going, it's whatever. I'm going to try and do something else. And unbeknownst to me, a lot of people were watching that I didn't even know. And one of those people was Image. And like three days after I made that announcement, Jim Valentino at Image said, dude, what? come over here. It's like, dude, well, you're going to stop? Don't stop. Come, just come over here. So I literally took the same characters that I was self-publishing in CyberZone. And that was my first Image book called Amanda and Gun. And... Uh, Ever since then, I've been with Image. That's been like over 20 years. So, you know, and that led up to Bomb Queen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess I could see um, Jim Valentino, his art style and yours, there's almost like it's like cartoon, but not like, but it's also, it's like, it's a combined approach. So he probably felt a kinship with your artwork. Yeah, Valentino, when he really, you know, he's the vice president of Image Comics. He's one of the founders of Image Comics. And in the uh, late 90s, he was actually the publisher, like the Eric Stevenson of today. He was actually the curator of all this content. And Valentino's an indie guy. You know, he's an, uh, he's an underground guy. He's, I mean, he's, he did Guardians of the Galaxy and all that stuff. But he's also a big indie guy. And he wanted to uh, really create a new content, not just the superhero content. As a matter of fact, he had a thing called The Non-Line back in the day, which was strictly no superheroes, black and white books. 
and and that was the only time I was on the cover of previews. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was it, he really went out of the way, and God bless that guy. I mean, he really to this day still tries to push the envelope in his own way. And uh, a lot of companies now are doing the same thing. And he was one of the earlier people to do it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it was about a lot of goes to Valentino. I mean, he's the one with the green-lit bomb queen yeah. off of just a couple of pictures that I drew. He's like, what's this? You know? <laughs> and it was unique, for sure. It was unique to him. And I'm like, well, I don't know if you'll want it, Jim. It's kind of, you know, it's different. It's not like a superhero book. It's a super villain book. It's like the bad guys win all the time. And he's like, I like it. Show me more. And then after that, I mean... It just, it just, it was initially just a four issue series, a four issue mini series. And now, yeah, we've got like, yeah, we're like, you know. <laughs> it's a huge success and, and, uh, and I love it. Now, what projects are you working on now? Right now, I'm working on new Bomb Queen. So, uh, Bomb Queen versus Trump. <laughs> and I'm working. And, and you had done a Bomb Queen versus Obama. And you also, so you've, not, you've got on three presidents, basically. Yeah, uh, I was Bush. When the the Iraq War thing, and Halliburton and all that stuff and everything, and then Obama because you know Obama would not stand for bomb queen on, on U.S. soil. And now Trump is the next target. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be weird saying target because bomb queen and Trump are like the same. They're buddies, really. Yeah. So the whole thing will be how. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing is getting to a point in the Trump presidency where the superheroes of the country come to Bomb Queen for help because she's the only one that could capture his base. And maybe think like and maybe think like him in a way you're saying. And think like him because you, you're not going to beat Trump by saying he's a bad guy because nobody cares about that. He's a, you know, they, he's got his base that says they love it. Just like Bomb Queen has her base that says we love how evil she is. <laughs> so the only way you're going to beat Trump is to steal his base from him and that is to out-Trump Trump. Not to be a good guy but to be a bad guy. <laughs> I like your style. Yeah, and the ultimate bad guy is a bad girl. Yeah. That's Bomb Queen. <laughs> so, yeah, so, that's, so the heroes get together because they can't kill their own sitting president. Right. They'll be villains. Right. <laughs> so you get a villain to do your dirty work. But, of course, it's Bomb Queen, and she's going to win where everyone's probably going to get stabbed in the back wow. kind of a thing. So yeah. you're, you're making a deal with the devil. You're going to pay the price. <laughs> You've created a, a tremendous character and, uh, and wonderful work. Jimmy, thanks so much for talking with us today. God, I love this. You guys are great. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're great as well.